Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. If you aren't familiar, the Astros cheating scandal is the only thing people can talk about when it comes to baseball these days. They've been accused of stealing pitch calls and relaying them via a trash can bang during the 2017 season. 2017 was actually the year that they also won the World Series. More recently, they've been accused of using buzzers taped to their chests to relay the same information. I wanted to use some analytic techniques to determine if or how much these tools help them win. Stick around to the end because I got some pretty surprising results. And this analysis ended up being way more in depth than I thought it would be. If you want to follow along, my code is linked in the description below. This is a link to my GitHub where I store most of the code that I use. I recently came across Tony Adams' website, signstealingscandal.com, also linked below. On this website, Tony painstakingly watched all the Astro games, and he noted when there were trash can bangs before pitches. I scraped this data and analyzed it using a few different techniques. It should be noted that this data is relatively small, so there could be some variance caused by that. I'm also not a baseball expert, so if I make any incorrect assumptions, please let me know in the comment section below. First, I looked to see if the number of runs scored or the number of hits that the Astros had were correlated with the number of bangs made. Second, I ran a linear regression to determine if the bangs had a predictive impact on runs or hits. Third, I ran a logistic regression to evaluate if bangs were a predictor of wins or win probability in and of itself. Finally, I did some exploratory analysis of the bangs and wins in different scenarios, and this is actually where the magic happens. That's where I got my most interesting insights. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to my channel. Okay, let's start by looking at the correlation analysis. So as you can see on the screen, there's a scatter plot with a trend line. And it's surprising, but what we can see is that there's almost no relationship between the number of bangs and the number of runs scored. This is essentially identical uh, to the hit scatter plot as well. Obviously, this was extremely shocking to me. For the linear regression, we generally expect a similar result because of the lack of correlation between the two events. Sure enough, the linear regression, which is also the equation for the fit line in the previous graph, suggested that almost none of the variance in runs or hits was explained by the number of bangs. Again, absolutely shocking and surprising. But in theory, the banging could have helped them win even if it didn't necessarily have an impact on runs by game. I still wanted to run a logistic regression to determine if the number of bangs had a significant impact on win probability in general. Again, I was absolutely floored that there was no significant relationship between these two events. Stumped by this, I did a little bit more research because I knew that it had to go deeper than this. To take this a step further, I looked at the number of trash can bangs for wins and for losses. As it turns out, the Astros you know, banged on trash cans significantly more in losses than they did in wins. For losses, they banged on average 22.2 times, and for wins, they banged on average 16.8. This led me to a hypothesis that they use sign ceiling primarily when they're behind in the games or when the game is close. Sign ceiling could absolutely help the team when coming from behind without necessarily showing up in the aggregate game data or in the previous models that we ran. To test this hypothesis, I looked at the number of bangs in the total game across differing game scenarios. I wanted to see if there were more bangs when the Astros were down earlier in the game. As you can see in the graph, when the Astros were losing in the early innings, we see a large spike in the number of total bangs. There are still some bangs in games where they lead the whole, the whole time, but I find this to be this large jump to be a step in the right direction for confirming my hypothesis. Next, I looked at how often the Astros won games in which they were behind. I wanted to see if their winning percentage was higher than what we would expect when they were down early. In this graph, aside from when losing in the second inning, you can see that they greatly outperformed the average team. I got the average team win percentage from Greg Stoll's website, which is also linked in the description below. I thought that there was a chance maybe they were just a good team when coming from behind, but to test this, I wanted to see how they performed compared to other teams and compared to the league averages in other areas. 
To do this, I looked at their expected win percentage when they were ahead in the game by inning. In this case, we see the actual opposite trend. They underperformed the average when they were ahead. To me, having this big a difference relative to the average is an extreme anomaly. I find it interesting that on the surface level, you wouldn't be able to relate the trash can bangs to performance. But after diving deeper, we can see that this could quite possibly have impacted games when they were behind. It's also suggested that the Astros used other methods of stealing signs as well, like whistling or, or, or clapping. And maybe if we had access to that data, we'd be able to see some evidence of this in our initial models as well. From this, I won't make a definitive statement about if cheating helped the Astros win. I'll only leave you with the facts of the analysis that I've done. So in the comment section below, please leave your thoughts on if this cheating really helped them to win. Thank you so much for watching and please throw this video a like if you enjoyed it. Good luck on your sports analytics journey.